Hi, um, we are on progressivism part three. This is our last video for progressivism. Yay! Um, so we are going to discuss um, democracy. Making democracy is the name of this one. So before we talk about making democracy, I want you to think about the time period, right? We've got this progressive movement that has been largely responded to by presidents like Teddy Roosevelt and Taft. So you need to know that the progressives wanted to combat the ills of urbanization and industrial capitalism, and they wanted to make their government more democratic, okay? So Political corruption is huge during this time period. Even though Taft and Roosevelt did a lot for the people, they were there were tons of um, corrupt officials in mostly local governments. Um, political bosses, you need to know what those are. They're political leaders and they got people to vote for them by giving favors. So um, I may be able to promise you a spot in my government if you and your entire church vote for me. That kind of thing. So it's about what can you do for me and what can I do for you. Um, they also uh, would make deals with contractors. So um, they would maybe take some money off the top when they were um, building a new road for their uh, city. or. Um, they would take advantage of the funds and the power that they were given. So the ring of people who made deals and got votes for these party um, political bosses um, or party bosses were called the political machine. So when I say political machine, you need to know that it's about corrupt politicians that um, make deals uh, based on oftentimes money um, to put someone specifically like a mayor or somebody in city government into power. So in New York City, this is called Tammany Hall, this political machine. Um, so they were Democrats and Tammany Hall used the power uh, to provide jobs and favors to its supporters. However, its leaders were very corrupt and they used really bad ways to get elected um, and to kind of take money for themselves. So you need to know from this slide, if you don't already have down the definition for political bosses, you need that. You need to be able to tell me what is a political machine and Tammany Hall is an example of that. Okay, so. How did people find out about political corruption? How do people find out about it? Quiz yourself, how do you think they found out about it? A muckraker, okay? These journalists that are exposing corruption in society. And a muckraker that you've already heard of is Lincoln Steffens. So he wrote The Shame of Cities in 1904 and he exposed um, the political machine which we discussed last slide, and all of the corruption that was happening in the government. So this really influenced governmental reform. People found out and they started feeling really betrayed and they felt like they weren't really, you know, fulfilling their role of the social contract. They weren't um, getting everything back that they needed from their government. The government was actually taking from them. So here's a really powerful quote from Lincoln Steffens. Oops. Power is what men seek, and any group that gets it will abuse it. So when you think about Lincoln Steffens, you should think about this quote. Power is what men seek, and any group that gets it will abuse it. And that's really what he uncovered. So, a progressive take on things. Um, corruption means that things are inefficient. Think about this. If I am the mayor, and my best friend who doesn't know anything about the police department or police, maybe my best friend has been a teacher for 30 years, okay? I become the mayor and my best friend that's a teacher for 30 years, I feel like I really need to pay her back. So I make her the head of the police in Cincinnati. Do you think that she's gonna do a good job? Probably not, right? She's been a teacher for 30 years. She's, she doesn't know anything about the police. This is what was happening uh, during this time period. 
also think about what my teacher friend would be doing as the head of the police department. She wouldn't know what she was doing. She'd be making bad decisions. She'd probably be spending money on the wrong things. So nothing ever got done. Okay, the people in the cities felt like they were not getting what they needed out of their government because of this corruption. So they argued that experts should play a major role in running the government. Um, so instead of my teacher friend, because I really like her and I want to pay her back for all that she's done for me, becoming the police chief, somebody else who has experience in that field will. So these two city reforms are um, kind of out of the progressive movement, the city commissioner plan and the city manager plan. So we just talked about city reforms due to corrupt and inefficient government. Now let's talk about state reforms due to corrupt and inefficient government. So progressives um, want to make sure that uh, their politicians and their representatives are being held responsible. So if my mayor elects her best friend who was a teacher as the head of the, poli the police department, I as a citizen, I wanna be able to do something about that. I wanna say this isn't right, you're not doing what I need you to do. So here are several state reforms that you are responsible for knowing um, that kind of combated corruption and helped make things more efficient. So the first one is the secret ballot. So when I go to cast my vote for mayor, right, um, I am completely in a box where nobody else can see what I'm doing, okay? Before the progressive era, that wasn't required. So party bosses would kind of hang out where the votes were happening and pressure people to vote for who they wanted them to vote for. Um, initiatives. Um, this allows the voters to petition the state legislature to consider a new law. Okay, so instead of having laws go through Congress, state Congress, you can propose a law if you'd like. Um, a referendum is um, kind of the same, it's close to an initiative. Initiative and referendum go together. Um, initiative says voters can um, draft a law and bring it to their state legislature and say, please consider this. A referendum says we have this bill or this law or this amendment that our state legislature has decided to pass and we can now decide if we want it to go through or not. Let's say the Ohio State Legislature passes a rule that you can't wear the color red. I don't know why they would, but let's just say they did, right? No more red. Then a referendum would be all of us getting together at Oak Hills and saying, um, the color red is really important to us. We're going to gather all of the signatures of the people that go to Oak Hills and their parents, and we're going to make sure that you cannot pass this bill. You can't pass this law. That's what a referendum is. A recall. Um, a recall is, let's pretend like I'm the mayor and I appointed the um, city police chief of Cincinnati, my best friend, the teacher. You, the people, can decide, whoa, 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 you are taking advantage of your position and you are not doing your job. So we want you out. So that's what a recall is. It says voters can create a list of signatures that say we want our mayor removed from office because he isn't doing what he's supposed to do. Lastly is the direct primary. Um, this is allowing the voters to decide who represents the Democratic and the Republican Party. So right now we have this huge debate about who is going to be the Republican candidate for president. Do you want to vote for Donald Trump? Maybe, I don't know. But Donald Trump is one, Donald Trump is, gosh, I can't talk. Donald Trump is one of them, as well as Carly Fiorina, Ted Cruz. I mean, the debate, the Republican debate had 11 people on it, okay? So this direct primary right here is saying that I, as a voter, I get to decide, do I want Donald Trump Ted Cruz, Carly Fiorina, John Kasich, which one of those people do I want to be the Democ or I'm sorry, the Republican candidate in the presidency? And it'll be the same thing with the Democrats. So you get to decide who the candidate is that you're going to ultimately vote for. Okay, so we have talked about city reforms, 
right? We've talked about state reforms. Now we're going to talk about amendments, which is the very top. These are federal government reforms. Remember, amendments are added to the Constitution of the United States. You have four amendments that you have to know, and you will have to match these amendments, the amendment number, with what the amendment actually said on your test. Okay, so you will need to know these. Um, so for the 16th Amendment, the 16th Amendment says Congress can tax income. And what's important to know about that is the federal government needed a new um, income system, a new tax system, and this allowed it to happen. The 17th Amendment said that I can vote for my own senator. Okay. Previously to that, um, the political machines were the ones that were controlling who the senators were. Okay, um, And this was dangerous because they were corrupt, so they were choosing their friends or people that could get them money or do them favors. So um, these political machines were really weakened um, by this because um, the people had more power. The 18th Amendment is prohibition. So this gets rid of all alcohol in the United States. Okay, You cannot make, sell, or transport alcohol at all. This is called prohibition, and we're going to talk about this here in a minute. But that's crazy, right? Later it was repealed, but at one time, alcohol wasn't allowed in the United States. And then lastly is women's suffrage. And remember, suffrage means voting. This comes in 1920 with the 19th Amendment. So let's discuss the women's suffrage movement. Suffrage means right to vote, right? We all know that. So when the 15th Amendment was passed in the 1870s, this is um, when African American men are given the right to vote. Women were like, what? How about us, right? So Susan B. Anthony is this lady right here, and she was a very influential suffrage leader. She worked for the temperance movement, which is banning alcohol, prohibition. She worked to end slavery, and she worked to get women's suffrage. So she was a rock star. Um, what she did was, um, well, one thing she, she did, I guess, is she was arrested in 1872 because she went to an election site and she placed a vote. And this was insane at the time. Women weren't allowed to vote, right? And so what she did was technically breaking the law. And she was put in jail, and she went. She used her jail time as well as her court hearing, her trial, to really publicize the fact that, hey, women have the ability to vote, and it's going to work, and we're going to make it work. So here, it's interesting to hear this New York paper. It said right after um, the, the um, trial ended, it's, the paper said, if it is a mere question of who got the best of it, Miss Anthony is still ahead. So this New York newspaper is saying, um, Susan B. Anthony is doing what's right. She is the winner here. She has voted and the American Constitution has survived the shock. Finding her $100 does not rule out the fact that women voted and went home and the world jogged on as before. So this person is saying, she voted and it's not a big deal. So later comes the National American Women's Suffrage Association and the National Women's Party. So they organized marches, speeches, they went on hunger strikes. They had four prominent leaders as well as Susan B. Anthony. Um, and eventually, more and more states were allowing women to vote. So it can go through a state legislature or it can be passed through an amendment. So these states say, yes, women can vote, and it's only refined to that one state. But eventually, so many states were allowing it that a constitutional amendment was passed in 1920. The last thing that we're going to talk about is the temperance movement. Remember, prohibition is banning the manufacture, transportation, and sale of alcoholic beverages. But the reason why this happened is the progressives and people like the Women's Christian Temperance Union and the Anti-Saloon League said, our society is not great right now. We're dealing with overcrowding, bad working conditions. We're dealing with poverty, pollution. We're dealing with child. There's so much wrong right now in our world. And you know what they blamed? They blamed alcohol. 